welcome everybody. Happy signing day. Happy holidays. Uh, another another great signing day in the books. Um, every one of them's uh, unique in their own way, and, and this one, you know, certainly was, I guess, a little bit as well. Although, um, I, you know, very proud of, I think, the way this one came together. Uh, you know, certainly given uh, some of the staff changes uh, that that have happened, especially, you know, that provided some some real challenges and also opportunities here in the last several weeks to, to bring this class together. Uh, and I think, you know, specifically, you know, certainly on the defensive side of the ball, you know, two of the areas we really targeted, uh, the defensive front and the secondary, where it was really important to, to close strong there. And, and we did that. We're able to, to get on some targets here late um, and land some guys that we think were, you know, really, really key to, to the future of this program, to the turnaround uh, defensively as, as obviously we, we step into you know, a new philosophy, a new scheme, new coaches, really all of the above. And so really proud of the way that the guys finished uh, there, that the, the uh, very proud of the way the class finished. Uh, especially excited about the offensive line as well. That was a, you know, it's been a, a real focus point. You know, we come in here year one and, um, you know, there's not an offensive lineman in the class. And so you knew that we, you know, we said it, I think, right when I got here, the next few years of offensive line recruiting are going to be really, really important. And we've been pleased with, uh, the group that's been here uh, this last year and then excited to add this new group kind of on top of them. And, you know, as, as you look just from a big picture program development, uh, the, the, the lines of scrimmage, obviously we all know are so critical to playing great football and stacking that talent uh, year after year and being able to develop that talent is so, so important. And so when I look at the class right now today, uh, there, there's a lot that I'm really excited about, but what we were able to do on the, the, two, the two fronts I think was really, really critical and really, really important. And uh, to add uh, another great O-line class, to add the size defensively that we were able to add. I know we've talked a lot about uh, being able to get bigger on the front, being a more physically dominant front. Uh, certainly can be very important as we move forward with Coach Lynn and this coaching staff to be able to uh, establish and develop that. The secondary was obviously a, a really big key there as well. Um, and we've, we've got a great class so far and a few other things that left to happen there. Uh, but certainly another piece that when you look at, you know, what we've had, what we've lost, uh, and, and what we need to replenish and where we need to get better, we knew that was going to be really key as well. And so uh, excited about the class. Um, we've, you know, the high school recruiting, as, as we all know, has, has continued to, to change and evolve over the last several years. Uh, our, our understanding of, you know, being at USC now for a couple of years and, and what we – what we know it's going to take to continue to elevate our program uh, has, has certainly evolved as well. And I think, you know, one thing, if I were to like give one, one comment maybe about this class or if I were to sum it up in one way, the, the commitment level of these guys to understand the opportunity that we all have here at a place like USC, the, the opportunity to help bring this program back to where we all want it to be is shared across this class. I mean, you could really feel that with all of the guys. I mean, really throughout the process. So many of these guys never wavered. So many of these guys never blinked. And they understand really what this means. And I think that's really special. And uh, it's something that we, honestly, as, as time has gone on more and more here in the last few years, we have prioritized that just each year, I think, a little bit more. Because I think it matters. Because, you know, what happens with that is, Listen, the guy that wavers on signing day is going to waver when something doesn't go his way here. You know, he's going to waver when he's not the starter as a true freshman coming right out. You know, he's going to waver, you know, when somebody on the outside tells him that he should, you know, look somewhere else. The guys that don't waver and that, that have a passion for being here, they're going, to, they're going to hang in there through the ups and downs. They're going to develop, and then you're going to look up, and, and down the line they're going to turn into really good players, and a lot of them much sooner rather than later. And uh, there's a lot of examples of that right now on our, on our football team. A lot of examples of guys that in this bowl game are getting ready to, to play a much different role than they've ever had. And it's, it's exciting. It's energizing to the program. You can, you can just feel that. And I think as we go forward, certainly in terms of the high school recruiting, that, that I just don't think you can put a big enough uh, value, uh, really, really, you can't stress the importance of that enough. And this class, if I were to sum it up in one way, there's a lot of talent, there's a lot of ability, but these guys are all dying to be USC Trojans. And uh, so very, very proud of that. 
Uh, excited to talk about these get these groups individually, these guys individually. Uh, but but a great day. There's still certainly a lot left to go. Uh, there will be more signings of, uh, of high school players, and then and then obviously there's a handful of positions that we're you know still being pretty active in the transfer portal, and will continue to be as all this plays out. So. Uh, obviously, years ago, this used to be kind of the end of things for a while. Uh, there's, it feels like this is just a, uh, in, in some ways, kind of the, the middle point or a point in the road that's going to continue on here through the next several weeks and months, and one that will be continue that we will continue to be aggressive in uh, to add to this roster, both for next season and uh, and the upcoming years. Uh, so, with that, fire away. We do, we do. Um, just a few things that are that are being worked through, uh, but we 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 uh, we do, and and potentially some more targets as well. There's a chance, yeah. There's certainly a chance that we will. Uh, obviously, you know, the 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 Malachi piece was uh, a little unexpected, and and I know I, I know some came out. I got asked a question the other day. Malachi was fantastic here. Like he's a great kid. And I will root for him forever and ever. He's going to go make somebody a heck of a player. And I'm a Malachi Nelson fan forever. Him and his family are tremendous. Uh, now, with him gone, it certainly it changes things, right? And now that you've got a, a pretty big gap in the program in terms of, you know, where, where Miller currently sits, you know, being obviously kind of down the line in his career, uh, and so we very well, uh, we are certainly going to look at taking a younger quarterback, uh, and uh, we're, we're looking at options there. It's obviously a very intriguing position for, for obvious reasons, and so starting to sift through some of those options because that, that, that choice for us will be, a, be an important choice. Um, and then so the, the, certainly the possibility right now exists that we could take as many as two quarterbacks in the portal, potentially one older one and one younger one. I think you know you go into the process, you know, and you, you evaluate these guys as, as students, as athletes, their potential, all of that. But then when you when you really get into the process with them, where maybe you offer a guy and you, you really start to build the relationship and you pursue them, and there's you know there's competition, you know, both ways. You, you start to get a sense of that, right? You got you start to get a sense of you know, like if, if a guy tells you that he's going to be a USC Trojan, how committed is he to that? And the reality is. I don't know, the, the, the younger version of me, you know, would probably have gotten so wrapped up in the competition part of it. And, and the reality is, is if you're dealing with a guy that's fluctuating or is wavering now, I mean, who's to say he's not going to do it six months from now? And, and at the end of the day, with the way that the rules have changed, the, the value right now of getting a, a player that you know has the ability, you know he fits this university and it's committed to it, like that's that's the best thing that you can get, right? Because if you can't, most guys are not going to come into their college career and have like the, the just entire, you know, fairy tale ride all the way up to the top. There's going to be challenges, there's going to be adversity, there's going to be things that they have to overcome. And, and I think you're trying to identify with each player, what are the chances of that happening? You know, what are the chances that this guy is going to hang in there? Because, like, with the staff that we have and are and now continuing to, to finalize, like, we can develop these guys. Like, if they'll give us the time and put their effort into it, they will develop here at USC. With this staff, it's, it's not a matter of if. It is going to happen. And so when you put together a staff like that, then the next piece that is, all right, let's find guys that are committed to that entire process. And when you have that, guys are going to get better, guys are going to improve, and you're, we're going to play the type of football that we want to play. It's it's honestly these these last six weeks because it's been a. I don't, it'd be interesting 
Katie, we ought to look it up. I don't know that if uh, a team's ever went six weeks in between playing a game in college football history. We might have the biggest gap ever. Um, and th this entire stretch has felt not completely, because obviously there's a lot of parts of the program that, that are healthy and doing well and continuing to rise, but certainly with all the changes defensively, there's a part of me that has felt that way because a lot of it is brand new and in some ways, and certainly in some ways, a lot of ways starting over. And um, But there's a lot of excitement with that. And I think you could see with some of the prospects that, that you know, that committed to us later in this process, uh, you know, guys that were committed to play at some pretty, some pretty good schools, guys that we were in competition with with some really good schools. Guys see, you know, they see what Danton has done. You know, they see what Matt Hintz has done. They see what Doug's done. I mean, and I think, I think for a lot of people, you can, you can lay out a vision, but when you start to add people that are clearly at the top of their game and some of the best coaches in the country, it, it, it sends a message to people. It sends a message to recruits. I, I, I mean, to think, you know, when we started looking at this defensive staff, that we'd be able to add three guys of that caliber with where they're at in their careers all on the same staff probably would have seemed like a little bit of a pipe dream, honestly. And, you know, now they're here. And I think it sends a message to so many people that, uh, that they see what we're building, they believe in it, they know they can come be a big part of it. And you've seen the recruits follow. And, and you know, there's been great response from the guys in this class. You see the way we closed, especially, you know, on the defensive front um, was, was really, really important. And then I think, obviously, looking forward at the, the future classes, um, people take notice. And uh, so that's, that's exciting. You know, you see the belief, and now it's time to go put it into action. Yeah, I mean that's that's a regional team that's uh, that you know that you're going to battle with. Uh, certainly, that's part of it. We've we've had our fair share of battles with them. There's some of the ones that have come down to the end uh, here in the last few years. Uh, guys have uh, has obviously went the other direction. We've had a lot of them that did not go to the end that are now on our roster. So yeah, I mean there's there's been some back and forth, and they've got a good program. They're going to get some good players. Uh, we've got a good program. We're going to get some good players, too. So um, for us, it's not uh, – USC doesn't really close the gap on anyone. I, I don't ever feel that way. For us, it's us trying to become the very best that we can and getting our program back to the level that we expect it to be, and that's, that's our approach in everything that we do. Yeah, a little bit of both. Uh, we had a few that, you know, I give uh, our personnel staff a lot of credit because in the wake of some of the defensive transition, you know, you've got some people in your program that have got to really step up and 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 kind of fill in the void. And I give our, our personnel staff a lot of credit. They were able to really start to look into some of the, the, the body types that we wanted, some of the areas that we needed to address. I'm um, able to have some early conversations with Coach Lynn and the other coaches about um, you know, where we felt like we needed to head from a personnel standpoint, we were, we were able to identify some guys and get on them quickly. And uh, like a lot of people, once they came out here and, and saw it, and once they got a chance to have a feel for th this university as a whole and for what we're building and the changes we're making defensively, you know, a lot of these guys became Trojans. And so yeah, a, lot of, a lot of credit to a lot of people. Uh, Coach Lynn's been phenomenal, you know, up to this point. Being able to to get into some of the homes with him and being able to to spend a little time with him on the road was great. And uh, you know, he's he's uh, got a great way about him. And, and when you look at the success he's had, both obviously at the NFL level and at the collegiate level, you know, he walks in and and commands a lot of respect, but does it in a very humble way that um, in a very genuine way that I think people are able to see and relate to. And uh, and I think that's very important. Large human beings, um, large, large human beings, and uh, people that are very, very tough to move, and th that are good at moving other people. And uh, so, yeah, I, I think, yeah, you just look at the size across the board with these guys. I mean, just the, of course, all all linemen that come into any program are going to have to develop, right? There's no question. But when you when the starting point is that much higher, 
uh, it, it, it increases the ceiling and it increases these guys' opportunities to be able to impact us sooner rather than later. And I mean, really, really the defensive front, I think, you know, really has that. And, and that piece is exciting. I mean, you look at, you know, you start to look at some of the measurables on these guys like, like Cam Fountain, you know, and like Jade, um, like Carlon, like this. some of these guys are, you know, these are big dudes, and these are guys that are really athletic. These are guys that fit the way that we want to play defensively. Um, and uh, so, you know, that that starting point is is that's what you want to look like coming in the door. And then you take them, you develop them, you feel like you've ID'd kids that, that really are in this for the long haul and really are fully committed to this. And the combination obviously gets you pretty excited. And then I feel the same way. The same way a lot about the offensive front. You know, this is now two years in a row that we've been able to, to add some really good pieces on both of them. And that's, again, kind of back to the previous comment, that's why a lot of the excitement for us leading into this bowl game is like so many of those guys are going to get their shot now. And like, you guys haven't seen them all yet. You know, you may have seen them warm up or play in a spring game. We get to see them, you know, every day. And a lot of these guys have been on scout teams doing this and that. And all of a sudden now they're getting this opportunity. And you look up and you're like, oh, wow, this guy's – this guy's ready to play, you know, and you're and you're pretty excited about it. So, we just we've got to keep stacking it, and that's the, you know, that's how you go from, you know, we've we've been the goal in the beginning was get this thing competitive, put ourselves in a position to win in the early years. We've done that. Um, now it's time to take the next step to becoming dominant, and where you go separate in these games, and you go. You don't have quite as many close ones, or not as many that come down to one play here, one play there, uh, and that's that's the next step for our program. And the number one way you get that is by consistently being good on these fronts. And I, today was a great step in the right direction. Say, I, you know, defensively, you know, Desmond comes to mind. Defensively, um, we we thought he was he he was still very heavily recruited, but in some ways, I thought undervalued a lot in the recruiting piece. And and what happens, and, and you guys see it, and obviously you guys you know cover this and see it yourselves, is the guys that you know get a lot of offers or make a name for themselves as a, a freshman or a sophomore earlier in their high school career. So many of these guys just kind of ride on that reputation all the way through. But when you go back and really study the tape, yeah, they were good then. But what did they do from well, like the sophomore to the senior year? And then there's so many of the guys for whatever reason that that are that are late bloomers. But then you go look at their senior tape, and their senior tape's better than a lot of guys that the outside world would say, well, they're ranked higher than this guy. And uh, Desmond was one of those guys that we certainly felt that way about. We felt like he was an absolute, I don't know, steel's not the right word because he was still very heavily recruited, but um, we were really, really excited about him. Um, that That is one of the first ones that comes to my mind. You know, Lorenzo Cowan comes to mind there. You know, getting Zoe today was, was a, a great get and his athleticism and what he brings off the edge. Uh, you know, I think the offensive line, you know, we signed Lolo here late, you know, that's what we think is he, he's going to have a little bit of development to do, but certainly you look at his ceiling and what it can be uh, is, is very exciting. Uh, yeah, I mean, we thought we thought Makai Sano was one of the best offensive linemen that we saw that we saw anywhere. Hayden Treeter, I'd put in that in that category as well. Guys that were really good players early in their high school career, but by the end became dominant players, and you could really kind of see that that arc. Um, and then and then certainly you know you pair those guys up with a lot of guys that were very highly recruited from an early stage. So um, there's probably a few more that that should fit in that category, honestly, um, but. Uh, yeah, you're right. And honestly, it, it, going through this year, year after year, it's funny, you look back on like some of the best players that I've been able to coach, and a lot of them actually fell in that category, you know, were guys that, that just climbed, and by the end of their high school career, they were really, really good and maybe under the radar. And you get them here, and everybody's like, who the heck is this guy? And I think we got a few that, um, that are certainly going to fit in that category. Well, you know, he's played very little football. I mean, very little football. Maybe the least amount of football of any player I've ever signed. Um, but then you turn on the tape from year, beginning of the year to end of the year, you see how he moves. You see some of the things. Because playing offensive line is 
it's not a really natural thing for most people. Um, it, it takes a lot. And so to see some of the natural movements and some of the things he already does well, considering he's really only played the game for less than a year, it's pretty remarkable. Then you see the the, the size and the athleticism. Um, and then for us, it's, you know, anytime you take a guy like that that you know is going to have some real development uh, to be able to be ready to play at this level, it's you get to know the kid. Is he bought in? Is it his work ethic? How determined is he? And at every step of the way, you know, we felt an intense desire by him to be great. And you combine him with one of the best offensive line coaches in the country, uh, that's a pretty exciting pair. Yeah, it's, you know, every year it evolves. Um, you know, so now it's, you know, the beginning when I first got here, it was obviously very, very new. Now these guys and, and their families have, have seen it unfold over the last few years as they prepared for, you know, their son or their child, obviously, to, to be recruited. These players have seen it with guys in their school or as they followed signing days, you know, uh, leading up to their own. It, it still comes back, I think, to, you know, every family's different. Uh, every situation is different. Every every person places different value on, um, you know, what an NIL contract looks like versus what's an, what's an education worth versus what's going to the best place for your development or coming and playing in a market like in L.A. I mean, that's everybody views those things differently. And I think, you know, the NIL is certainly, listen, it's a factor. It's one of those things if you don't have a competitive NIL program, you're – you're going to have no shot to be competitive. The flip side of it is you're certainly trying to find people that are not overly fixated on it so much to the point that it takes away from all of the main reasons that you would come to college and play college football in the first place. And so it's a it's certainly a fine line in terms of, you know, of our evaluation. Uh, and, a, and it's certainly a fine line in terms of it, I think, for families as you're trying to make the right decision and one that you're proud of and that you don't regret uh, down the line and so it's it yeah it, absolutely it's shifted it's a part of it's a part of every recruitment in some form or fashion some people it's a very small thing some people it's a very big thing and uh, to, certainly to each their own um, I think like our program our NIL program continues to to climb uh, you know the house of victory has done a, a great job it's been you know really now in existence for I think eight months uh, and has been largely very, very positive and appreciative to all the people there uh, that, have, that have worked so hard uh, to, to improve it. And it's, it's, it's just continuing to climb. It's, it's in a way better place than it was, you know, six months ago. And six months from now, I think it's going to continue to climb. And, and as all Trojans, listen, we, we've all got to, you know, we've all got to continue to invest in this. We've all got to continue to support it because it is a huge piece of this um, and certainly, you know, you're not going to be a national championship level program without it. Okay, if they've got a few more too, I'm, I've, I got a few. Yeah, far away, far away. Uh, Yeah, I give I give Coach Manning a, a lot of credit. You know, he's 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 one of the better recruiters uh, that I've been around, and it's the thing the reason he is because he's very genuine um, and and very honest, and and a really a relationship oriented person, and uh, and has had great experience. And so, no question to go get you know you know two of our you know I, I agree two of our favorite players in the class. Um, you know, with with Cam and with Elijah. I mean, a tremendous job by him. He you know go get two guys across the country. Uh, two guys that a lot of people really wanted to sign. Uh, I think the key with those, with those one is, you know, first, you know, and give him a lot of credit, identifying, you know, two kids and two families that were, you know, going back to the previous question, like about NIL and all the different things going on in college football. Like these were two kids and two families that are like about the right things, like all the way. Like, I mean, just, you know, they, the, the process was as you'd expect it would be. It was competitive. They made their decision. They never looked back. They never wavered, not for one second. And I give, a, I give credit to those two kids, uh, to their parents, 
uh, I give credit to, to Roy and the relationships that he's established, and uh, you know we, we feel like those are two future difference makers, and, and Roy certainly does, deserves a ton of credit for that. Well, uh, you know, as I told you guys, you know, one of the one of the things when I came in here um, was, you know, th they brought me and us here for a reason, right? And so you take a you go take a deep dive into, all right, what what hasn't quite clicked in the previous years, and and we really studied that. And I came here and I saw a roster full of California kids, full of them, and to me, it's. We have to do a great job in the state. I know y'all have heard me say this, like, but we have to get the right guys. Like I can, I can come stand up here on a day today and say, "Oh, well, we signed 18 guys from the state of California." Everybody's, you know, the the notion on signing days is like, "Oh my gosh, they killed it in California and they did great." And and, and the reality is, you're gonna get you're gonna get defined by what you do in the fall, you know, not what you do on this day. And that's how these classes come together, it's getting the right people, the right guys in terms of their investment level in this program. And the other thing that certainly has shifted too is like people got to realize like we're not in the Pac-12 anymore. You know, like this is, those days are over. You know, look where we're playing. You know, look look at the competition that we're playing. Look where the majority of our conference lies. And that's that along with there's just a lot of changes in college football in general where, I mean, nobody – no state of players is just staying home like they used to. And so the, all of those things are a little bit different. Now, that is not me saying that Southern California is not a priority. Hell yeah, it's a priority. Absolutely it's a priority. It will always be. It's the one state that our coaches have an area to recruit. Um, every single coach on our staff does. Every single person on our staff is involved in recruiting the state. But we are going to make sure – that we're signing the right guys out of California. We're not just going to go take them just because they're in a home state. It needs to be the right guys. It needs to be the guys that are invested. Um, and we've got to continue to invest and pour into this state. Um, some years you're going to get a few more than others. That's just the nature of it. But it will always be priority number one for us um, in terms of you look at the map and where do you have to do great? Absolutely. But it's never going to surpass getting the right people in here. Never. Well, I think it's you know it's it's been great for him to to obviously you know got a chance to coach against us in the in the last game or our last game and then uh, for him to be able to be here at practice you know and to see some of these body types and see what we have actually be out there on the grass with these guys has been a real advantage um, and yeah I think we we look at you know some of the things that certainly they did at UCLA some of the things that he had done in the NFL and you start to you start to put together a plan of what that can be here and what we envision both with what we have now and developing it, what we know that we can bring in and add to that, and then how do you get a great defensive front out of it. And one of the things I loved about him was how multiple that, that he's shown the ability to be at on the front and being able to take different skill sets and make it work at a high level. And, you know, they're, I mean, again, you look at, at the, you know, what was probably the best front in college football last year from a production standpoint. Um, and so, it's been fun going through that process. I mean, I think we were, as I told you guys, one of the non-negotiables for me in the defensive coordinator hire was somebody that that was that wanted to play bigger on the defensive front and shared that vision, and, and we certainly have. And uh, I think have, have so far really been in lockstep about the guys that we're going to go after, even some of these guys certainly that signed today, some of the body types that we're going to go after uh, on top of – you know, how we're going to develop the guys that are already in the program. So it's exciting to, to feel that alignment and progress already. Well, I, I honestly think it, it, it impacted more where we signed the guys from than actually – um, like the body types or the qualities of who we signed. I mean, we came here to win national championships. Like in the definition of winning a national championship, like you got to beat everybody in some form or fashion. And so our mindset has never been, you know, 
get guys to win the Pac-12 or get guys to win the Big Ten. I mean, our, our mindset is getting guys to go make runs at winning the national championship. And I think this was something that we felt like we – some of these areas that we addressed were what we felt like we had to improve on to continue the climb to that. And so uh, I know a lot gets made of what the Big Ten transition and all of that, and certainly, you know, you're going to play more teams in, that, in, in our league, certainly obviously than any others, but at the same time, if you're trying to, if those are your goals and that's what you're climbing to, like there's not really anything higher than that. And so uh, that's our expectations, that's our mindset and uh, as we build this. Um, I do think it, it, it is certainly the impact on where we're signing these kids from and kind of the way that that played out was even maybe a, a little, um, the impact was a little heavier, a little stronger this early on before we've ever even played a Big Ten game than maybe I anticipated. I mean, I, you just, you kind of, you get in the flow and you kind of start going with it. And, and you just, there was just a lot of interest and then a lot of the best players that we signed were from all, you know, kind of all over the country and several kind of in that, in that part of the country that the Big Ten, you know, typically obviously does business. So, um, yeah, I think it impacted that more, but the goal in terms of what we're building is, is about one thing. That's winning, that's winning the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, the, the offensive skill, we'll, we'll have to bring in a few guys. Uh, the talent there is, that we have right now is really, really, really good. And about, about, as, about as good as you'll find. Uh, we'll, need to, um, we'll need to add a few more guys to get to the numbers that we want to play at next season. But I'd, again, I think that'll be a very appealing position for obvious reasons. Um, Certainly, you know, running back is an area uh, that we, you know, that we knew, certainly, especially with, with, you know, Marshawn going to the draft and, and Darwin Barlow transferring out, which we knew those were both very real possibilities. We were under the assumption that we were going to certainly be in the market for a transfer running back, and we've been aggressive there. And so uh, um, excited about Excited about Quentin and, and Amarian and their, their chance to, to play in this game. Really excited about Brian Jackson. We targeted him a long time ago. Um, and But, you know, three freshmen that have, you know, limited experience, you, you certainly need to add an older guy or two into the mix. And, and so that's certainly been a priority as well. Um, so, yeah, I, and, and uh, other, you know, the other group we hadn't talked about a lot today, but, I mean, the, the tight end group, you know, and that's, that's, that's been a room that we certainly have wanted to bolster. You know, Lake has done a great job for us this year, but it's it's been a room in terms of depth, especially our first two years offensively. That has not been that it's not been one of our strengths in terms of just the amount of guys that we have. Um, and I think that's starting to shift, which is a which is a great thing because it allows you to be a little more multiple in how you play. Those guys are typically impactful guys on special teams as well. Uh, so that's another room I think that's going to really be bolstered with the, the guys we signed today and. Obviously, you know, Walker coming in here pretty soon as well. So, um, yeah, no, it's – rooms are good. We're going to have to add a couple of pieces, but there's uh, a lot of good players in those rooms right now. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I could talk about anybody that we didn't sign just from a rule standpoint. But yeah, we're gonna, you know, we're we're not we're not moving too fast on this. Um, obviously, the Malachi thing was a it was a surprise to us, and who we take as that young quarterback is an important decision for this program. Uh, it's really important, and there's so many options. You know, if you you know, getting somebody in this class or looking into the portal for somebody that's, you know, certainly on the younger end of it, maybe pretty early on in their career. And, but you got to get the right one because, I mean, you know, the person that, that takes this could be in a pretty unique position pretty quick, a very advantageous position very quick. And so it's certainly important. So I, um, you know, understand the timing of it, but also understand, you know, 
like we're gonna get a good quarterback. We just gotta we gotta have the patience to to make sure that we are able to do full evaluations and that we feel very very comfortable with whoever that person is. You're welcome. All right. Thanks everybody. Happy holidays. Yeah.